Hello, 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 hello. How is everyone doing today? Um, I'm still getting stuff set up, but today we have a special guest. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute. And the special guest is Adam Duff. Adam, hello, you want to introduce hello. yourself? Yes. How are you doing? Uh, thank you, Anthony, for reaching out and for inviting me. This is uh, quite the treat, quite an unexpected treat. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think a few streams ago, someone was like, hey, you should talk to Adam Duff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so then I reached out to him and then he yeah. was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's talk and hang out. And so let's do a little bit of like a kind of a podcast slash interview thingy. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we probably will do this pretty often. I don't, I don't see why we wouldn't just keep hanging out. Um, I'd love that. I'd yeah. absolutely love that. And so right now I'm going to share this stuff on my socials. So that way if people... Um, want to hang out there they can know about it uh all right so that should be all good and done okay so it's going to be the same kind of format as normal guys i'm just going to be hanging out painting but the difference is that adam you know he brought some cool things to talk about so we'll probably talk about that stuff oh yeah we got some people already saying oh dope adam hey <laughs> check it out hey guys um and so we can just yeah like a, like a normal stream that i would normally have i just will hang out and chat with y'all and then uh, Mike's going to help moderate, so if you guys say stuff. That way, um, I don't have to constantly look at the chat. Yeah. Normally, I, I would, because it's like, just me. me and, right. You mean the streamers, or the people watching the stream? And so then, uh, it's not too bad. And I don't have right. thousands of people <laughs> watching me, so it's much easier to, to manage. Yeah, but, uh, for sure. But we should be good, though. So, uh, I'm already... I'm going to start painting right now. So... Adam, uh, before we get into kind of the topics that you wanted to talk about, if you wanted to kind of talk more about who you are and what your journey is for those who may not know. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm a fellow artist like yourself, a fantasy illustrator and uh, also a teacher. I'm, I have uh, Lucid Pixel. It's my private art, art mentorship online. I've had that going since around 2015 or so, and that's pretty much become my full-time job at this point. Um, I also illustrate, do fantasy illustrating, uh, illustrations on the side as well uh, when I have the time. And yeah, apart from that, I'm a YouTuber like yourself. I have lucid pixel, um, and, uh, been doing that for many years as well. And it's my second full-time job where I reach out to, to my audience, just like you. Cool beans. All right. Well, that was short and sweet. Yeah, <laughs> because whenever I do intros, it's like a whole thing, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, but, I mean, you know, I'll tell you something though. As far as social media and stuff, I, I, I have created a lot of social media tentacles all over the place, but it just became a lot of work to just keep up with all that stuff. You know, one update, one update would stretch across too many things. So it's, I just decided to keep it simple. So YouTube has really kind of become my main hub for reaching out type of idea. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I um. Yeah, I, I talk a lot. So, when, like, whenever I do the, the intros, I always go into, like, a crazy life story stuff. So I appreciate yeah. you guys, you taking it nice and simple and just letting people know what you, or know what you do. Oh, don't worry. I can it. chat. I can chat. I, I'm just <laughs> okay. getting warmed up here. Okay, okay, cool. So, I mean, we could go ahead and start off because I know you came a little prepared more so than I normally am. I'm just, like, jump right in. And so, like, if you want to kind of... Uh, you know, start the, the this little chat, like this like kind of semi podcast thing we got going where yeah. you can you could bring in some interesting topics that you think would be nice to talk about and we'll just have a conversation. Yeah, I think most yeah. of the stuff we probably will have agreement on. I don't I don't see anything that would be too controversial. But if, if there is anything that uh, we disagree with one another. I think that's fine. I think we should have that conversation. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And we come from two different, you know, like, although we both have similar jobs, we come from two slightly different uh, angles of it, right? Mm -hmm. And very often I, I see many artists with who are equally uh, uh, successful and equally skilled, but have very different angles and approaches towards teaching and learning and all that kind of stuff, since we're both teachers too, right? So absolutely. Um, um, but yeah, let me see here. I wrote a couple down here. Well, I was thinking of questions, knowing you, I've been following you for years and there's a certain kind of energy and a certain kind of quality you bring to teaching into your videos, a, a personability. That's not a real word. doesn't matter. It is. 
It is a word. It is. Well, there you go. <laughs> Good. I don't well, know. <laughs> now it is. There's a certain personal kind of approach you have towards towards your attitude towards art, and I kind of wanted to feed questions that that felt very Anthony Jones to me. And one of them was, um, ah, here's a good one. Uh, beginner misconceptions, or I wouldn't even say beginner, I'd say artist misconceptions in general that uh, artists tend to believe that, uh, that make art great. Very often people tend to prioritize the wrong thing when it comes to believing this is what makes great art. Mm -hmm. And very often artistically, we tend to have to let go of that and realize kind of take on a different perspective artistically to create artwork that impacts other people, right? So as a teacher and as an artist yourself, are there experiences, are there times in your life where, you, where certain things you had to unlearn artistically to help to get to that next level? Yeah, so you're, you're saying like, what are the misconceptions of like what makes good artwork, right? Like just yeah, kind of paraphrase. Exactly. Okay, Yeah. so uh, when I first started, um, and I think this is a common problem that I see within my students is that um, you, you you acquire biases, okay? Right. And so these biases usually get in the way. And so yeah. one of the biases that you get um, is your own personal taste, right? So mm -hmm. for instance, yeah. like uh, I'm a big fan of like the Transformers franchise, right? I love the yeah. Transformers franchise. And I like movies like Fast and the Furious and, and these types of movies, you know. Mm -hmm. But in my field, like a lot of people hate these movies. Like a lot of them, uh, or they have like really strong opinions uh, around these films, you know. Right, yeah. Uh, but I, I, when I first started, um, you know, I started to kind of evaporate my own opinions because I was, they, I was like, well, I guess these are bad, you know. Or there was mm -hmm. these, these like really big um, like arguments I would see happen around anime, like people in the art, like these art instructors would talk all this mad crap about people who would do anime, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, I would just kind of be like, I guess anime is not that good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, but then I started getting better and, uh, you know, I, I would start to think, well, you know, I do like Fast and the Furious and I do like Transformers. Like, I love these movies. I used to watch them all the time as a kid, you yeah. know? Um, and, or not as a kid because the newer movies are, were, came out a little bit later, but like mm -hmm. I used to watch Transformers, the TV show, the cartoon. Uh, when I was oh, a kid, yeah. for sure, right? <laughs> and and then the Fast and the Furious movies, I've always been a fan. Like, um, I remember yeah. one time uh, I was going to go watch a movie with my friends, and they wanted to go watch um, Finding Nemo. And I, right. and I was like, Finding Nemo? That's like a cartoon. I want to go watch uh, Fast and the Furious. That mm -hmm. looks way cooler. And, and yeah. they were just like, ah, you know, but like we heard a lot of good things about it. And it was like a couple. So I was like, ah, okay, I guess we'll go watch it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I ended up loving Finding Nemo, by the way. I thought it was a great movie. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? This movie's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But then I ultimately went and watched, you know, Fast and Furious and still loved it. Yeah. And so then the, the point I'm making is that, um, and same thing with like the whole anime stuff, I started realizing, was, well, wait a minute. It's like, but a lot of people love anime. A lot of people love Fast and the Furious films, uh, yeah. the Transformer movies, you know? I think that these other opinions that my art peers and contemporaries are having are actually... Uh, in the minority, you know, it's yeah. actually they're the outliers, you know, yeah. it, it's it's the opposite. And I was like, wait, like, so what what makes good art? What makes good design? What makes things good? And that's when I realized that you have to consider the context, mm -hmm. you know, because if you only focus yeah. on your own biases, then you're going to be really, really disappointed um, mm -hmm. when the results don't go your way or as you expected. Yeah. Case in point, you know, I'm sure the director who did the latest Blade Runner movie had good intentions of making it like this, this big hit, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the reality is that you know the Blade Runner franchise was a cult classic because it takes yeah. a cult to keep it alive, you know. Yeah. Uh, because when it first came out, it wasn't that popular, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then so only a subset of people, people that work in our circles, love these movies. Mm -hmm. But they have to realize we're a real small minority. Yeah. And and I I love the the Blade uh, Blade Runner aesthetics, but I actually mm -hmm. don't like those movies. I feel like they're very boring. I fall asleep every yeah. time. And, Same here. Yeah. And that's just my opinion. And I don't think that that's necessarily right or wrong. It's just my opinion. But if you were yeah. to ask me, okay, um, are those movies good movies? I would actually say no. But if you say if those movies are um, uh, visually stunning, I would say absolutely. You mm -hmm. know. And I'm saying that objectively. I'm trying to keep my opinion out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because if you're if you're gonna say, well, do, uh, is Blade Runner a good abstraction of a movie, like the abstract mm-hmm. ideas and the stuff? I was like, yes, it is. Is it a good, you know, mainstream popular movie? No. Yeah. You know, the general audiences don't get it. They just don't. Yeah. And so, uh, I think that's a really good trait as a designer is to recognize those differences, like your own personal yeah. opinion versus mm-hmm. what is the task. Because I'm right. always gonna work on like Finding Nemo. Right. For whatever reason, uh, I would be like, why are you guys hiring me? Right. Because none of my work fits in this genre. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, no, we're really going to we're going to twist it. We're going to make it like live action and it's going to be a horror film. And I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. well, then in that case, we're, we're good. You know, but yeah. if, um, you know, if I got approached by uh, like a studio, like um, like, I don't know, like a, a game that I don't really like, which is we like the Skyrim genre they were like hey you know mm-hmm. let's work on we want you to work on skyrim mm-hmm. i'd be like let's do it because that's like right yeah. up my wheelhouse you know yeah and then yeah. a game that i really love like the uncharted games mm-hmm. if they were like hey we want you to to work on these these games like uncharted 5 whatever right yeah i'd be like i don't know because again it's too contemporary it's something that i don't do often yeah yeah and that's me putting my biases, my own personal opinion aside to recognize what's actually going on, what I would actually enjoy, and and versus like what I think is good, what I think should be made. I think if you really have an opinion that you think is valuable and has like a lot of merits, I usually encourage people then to to make their own artwork and prove it. Yeah. You know? Because it's really easy and we're falling into this culture of like really kind of being critical of everything. Um, it's really easy to talk badly about anything. It really is. You can even like yeah. look at movies that we all love, like um, like Jurassic Park. I'm sure most people would agree that th- that's both a great visual movie and a great movie, right? It's like mm-hmm. it's a, it, mm-hmm. it does everything. You can you can make the argument that like why didn't they make the fences bigger or more concrete? Why didn't they do uh, better parameters to, to like keep the uh, park safe? You know, mm-hmm. we can talk all about the plot holes. We can get really into the nitty gritty and dig into the, the the larger problems of the movie, yeah. But the pro- the point is is that people don't recognize it because it's a lot of fun, you know. Mm-hmm. And people forgive a lot of those things, you know. Yeah. And so it's like it's again like I'm saying it's really easy to be critical and just talk crap about anything, you know. It's hard to yeah. be more objective and more critical and understanding what does well and what doesn't. And I'll so, tell you something, just to kind of interject there, I would add to this, it's a, what you're saying is a big deal because um, we tend to, as artists, we get very caught up in the technical, right? And being technical artists, we very often tend to observe and scrutinize things based on how they perform technically. And that can pull us away from what actually just makes something entertaining, and yeah. as artists, we kind of, and I see this in your work all the time, and it's, you've trained the technical skills, you've trained your design skills, you've learned about lighting, you've learned about rendering, you've learned about surfaces and anatomy and all this different type of stuff, which is all great. But then are your paintings fun to look at? Are they actually visually engaging? Am I, am I getting excited looking at your artwork? And that's the kind of separation I see a lot of, I hear a lot of people who will pull apart a game, you know, like, like secure or whatever, like something I'm playing right now, or, you know, they'll say, oh, they compare it technically to this or, um, yeah. uh, all these different things, but is it fun? Is it yeah. actually fun? I, I, how comedians pulled apart Dane Cook, right? They completely, mm-hmm. they completely pulled them apart publicly because, oh, what he's doing is technically not jokes. And so they're going, yeah, okay. <laughs> but everybody's but laughing, people, so what's the point? But there's an entire freaking auditorium of people screaming laughing. So yeah. fuck your theory about, excuse my French, screw your theory about, <laughs> about, about the laws and technicalities of comedy because people are laughing. And yeah. that's that's the bottom line, isn't it? And yeah, it's I, it's so so important what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I I would say like it's important to to make a separation, right? Like like you talked about technicality versus like visceral reaction, right? Yeah, and so it's, yeah. that's the the point I'm making is that like, and I agree with you, is that if you are focused only on technical, then maybe we can have some objective opinion here, like. But yeah. what is what is the what is the what does the technical uh, mean? Like, what do you mm-hmm. mean by technical? You mean like mm-hmm. it has like a beginning, middle, and end? Like it's a 
as a punchline, yeah. you know, like as a joke. And if if Dane Cook's not doing that, he's just doing gags. Like, isn't yeah. that in itself jokes? Like, didn't um, what was the guy's name? The guy that smashed watermelons. Like, didn't he just do Carrot like? Top? I forget the his. Carrot Top did that. No, no, Carrot Top is talking a... about Carlos Mencia. No, oh, not Carlos yes. Mencia. No. Oh, uh, the guy that Harry smashes Mendo? watermelons. He's like a very. Uh, it's like Gallagher, I think it was his, like, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, but Carrot Top is another good one, because he, he just does, like, uh, puns, right? Yeah. They're not necessarily, like, a beginning, middle, and end, but they're just, like, puns, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's another good example. It's like, so, but yet he, you know, he's still as a comedian. He still is doing stuff. And yeah. and so there's there needs to be a point where people have to respect that there is a an audience for said thing. Like if I was going to be a comedian and I wanted to be a technician, like one that has a beginning, middle and end has a premise, like as a setup to a premise and then just like, you know, uh, has a punchline, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it then doesn't mean that I should go and get mad at the person who does like the simple fart jokes, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, there's two different genres. And, and for me to get mad at somebody who is doing something that, seems and appears to be easier which may be true right doesn't mean that um we should tear them down right like a good example of this in our community would be like people who do like fan art or people who do like um like you know these like patreon things where they have like (laughs) just like fan art version of characters in like the most like you know provocative and exotic situations Mm -hmm. and now People are very critical of this. They're like, well, that's easier, right? Like, because mm-hmm. it's just like, it's not their own ideas. They're just kind of like perverting the ideas of others. And mm-hmm. I say to that is that, well, that's just how it works. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. sex sells, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you take two two ideas, like sex uh, and characters that people are familiar with, yeah, that's going to do pretty well, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's like the same kind of thing that you see with like Instagram models, right? You have these group of people who are just born beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't do anything for it. They just literally are just beautiful people. They are ungodly beautiful, right? Yeah. And all they do is to take pictures of themselves. And yeah. so, you know, it feels unfair, right? Like mm-hmm. for someone like probably myself who isn't, I can't just take pictures of myself and do well. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. not going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um it, it seems I'm sure, unfair. I should be agreeing to you. I shouldn't be mm-hmm-ing that, actually. No, I completely disagree, <laughs> but please go on. No, no, it's fine. You can agree. Sure. Uh, right. You know, so I guess I convinced somebody to marry me, so I'm all right. There you go. <laughs> I, I, my self-esteem is doing all right these days. Uh, but my point is, is that, you know, like, that's clearly a thing that people get really mad about, right? Mm-hmm. And because it feels unfair. It's like, like uh, what was it? The, what was it? Ken, was it Kendall? One of the Kardashian peeps? Who okay. was like a self-made billionaire? This is what they said in quotations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, well, the youngest billionaire, and people got really upset. They're just like really bad about this idea that this is like who we're accepting as like our r- richest folks. It's like, well, no, like she definitely put some effort into doing the things that she did, and yes, she <laughs> is one of the beautiful people who took advantage of her beauty and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? But it's like you know. The, the problem I have usually with this criticism is that it really doesn't do anything. Like, so what, what is our solution then, right? Should we then, anyone who's beautiful, we should just say you can't have fame and money. Uh, mm-hmm. Anybody that has like an easier access to this stuff, we should say, no, you can't have it because it's not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, because then that ultimately tips in the opposite, opposite direction, right? Yeah. And it's a little, it's a little dangerous if you go that way. Uh, mm-hmm. And plus it doesn't do anything. So like, let's say we do take down Kendall to say, you know what, give us that billion dollars back. How dare you? Right. right. So, what does that do? What does that actually accomplish for the person or for, per, for the people who are critical? Nothing. Mm-hmm. All it does is takes down the person who uh, we just, for whatever reason, don't agree should have that, you know? Mm-hmm. And in some cases, I do believe that there are people that don't deserve the, the fortunes that they have gotten, you know? Um, but in most cases, uh, I'm all, I'm okay because it's like it really doesn't affect me unless it genuinely affects me. Like usually it doesn't. Um, I don't mind. I don't care because that's someone else's life. Yeah. And the point I I'm would, trying to and the yeah, yeah just to finish this point and I'll let you jump in on this. the The point I'm trying to make is that you know uh, a lot of these critical like people being critical 
and like have something to say, whether it's like going back to art, like technical or whether it's like, you know, the style or the genre. Um, it's because for whatever reason, maybe they, they didn't reach that same like um, status, right? Yet. Mm -hmm. And I find that people who do, people who tend to reach the same status uh, or like the, the higher status that they would always wanted to have tend to complain less, you know, mm -hmm. because they start to see, oh, wait, no, I actually got here and it's, it is a challenge. And the people that yeah. I was very critical of before I met them and they're really good people and they're not malicious, like, why was I so negative, <laughs> you know, in the mm -hmm. past? Uh, and I can speak for myself. There was an artist that I used to be very critical of. And I was like, oh, this guy always draws and makes the same stuff. And I met him and I felt so guilty. I felt such a good <laughs> uh, idiot. I was like, what was yeah. I thinking? Why was I focused on that? And it was really focused on my own insecurities yeah. rather than uh, focusing um, like it was, r rather than focus on my own ins insecurities. I projected it onto others. And I feel oh, like a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of that happens in our industry yeah. and others. You know, it's, it's, you know, you're saying you're talking about the beautiful person, right? And how you, you, it feels unfair that they're taking advantage of their beauty and they're not actually making an effort. The thing is, like you said, they're born beautiful. For them to be beautiful and for them to um, use their beauty for gain, for whatever gain, does not damage their integrity because they are in essence being who they are. They're being who they were born to be. And it's what, what you can always tell the difference between somebody who's trying to be beautiful and somebody who authentically is. And I don't mean this by any stretch of the imagination as a hit on people who are less attractive, but what people are attracted to, what makes a person attractive is integrity. Knowing who you are and knowing how the world sees you, being aware of that, having self-awareness. And if you look at something like, for instance, one of the most beloved characters in The Incredibles is Edna Moat. She's not, she knows she's not, you know, uh, uh, she knows she's not a supermodel. She even kind of makes a little hit at supermodels, right? Uh, in, in the movie. But she knows who she is. And Brad, uh, uh, Brad Bird even mentioned um i have my little kids too at home so they might make some noise as well yeah i actually mute myself on the stream so nobody can hear that <laughs> yeah, yeah no but i but I, I don't want you to get distracted if you hear them in the background just oh just don't worry i've got three kids i'm, I'm quite used to the noise <laughs> okay but cool. um Continue yeah no, uh what brad bird based the character of edna mode off of off of uh bet midler and he said when Ben midler would walk into the room she's not walking in trying to be a supermodel She's not walking in trying to be this ravishing, you know, six foot three beauty. She was a short, big, wide, wide faced, obnoxious, loud. Hey, everybody. Hey. And she because she knew that's who she was. She had an incredible sense of self. Nobody could take their eyes off of her. It wasn't because she was prettier. It's because she ha she completely knew who she was and completely embraced herself. When somebody who's beautiful embraces being beautiful, there's integrity involved. And that's what makes them attractive but when you see the conflict between who they truly are and who they want to be you're actually re reacting more to their con their inner conflict rather than their inner reality right and for any yeah, artist I can, I can agree with that too that that makes a lot of sense yeah and um it's as an artist we were talking before about style and stuff like that we were talking about uh you know wanting to you know knowing that for instance you might love this game but you wouldn't want to work on it artistically, plays into that same world. It plays into that same uh, headspace because in real life, I'm goofy, I'm nerdy, I'm I'm a joker, I'm very lighthearted, but my artwork tends to take on a little bit more of an artistically dark thing. Yeah. And when you look at my art and you look at me, if you knew me in person, you go, I don't... On the surface, superficially speaking, you might not be able to make that connection, but artistically, you might be able to, right? But I had to make that discovery on what what drove me artistically, what type of headspace drives me artistically. And it was not trying to be like Anthony Jones. It was not trying to be like a different artist. It was just discovering who I was and finding my own sense of self artistically. And when people look at your work, I, I, I can guarantee a lot of people look at your work and, and there's a lot of people who want to produce artwork that looks like yours. You have a very iconic style. You have a very 
you know, a very a, a very catchy style, and a lot of people will try to emulate that. Well, I wouldn't say that, but I appreciate oh. it. <laughs> well, it's you're being modest, but yeah, no, absolutely. I, I've even learned, I've even grown a lot looking at your artwork as well, and yeah, it's, you know, it's a very catchy thing. But well, I will say just to me, yeah, right? just to just to jump off of that, I will say that a lot sure, of my course. style and a lot of my artwork is driven by the things that I I, I like to look at, like some of yeah. the artists that I. I tend to be inspired by is like, you know, like the, the guys who worked at, uh, at, uh, Marvel, uh, Ryan, yeah. uh, Minerding, Charlie, mm -hmm. Wen. That, those are some of my early influences of some of my coworkers that I had was Izzy mm -hmm. Medrano. Like that guy really drove me to really work really hard. Um, yeah. and then, you know, right now I, there's a ungodly amount of people on art station that I'm being influenced by. I'm starting to mix up my styles. Um, I started looking at comic book artists like Sean Gordon Murphy, uh, mm -hmm. Mike Mignola, and it and it goes where's, kind where's of the, the core, where's the core of that though? That like when you were attracted to artists, they are appealing to something that exists within yeah. you. Yeah, so I was gonna right? yeah I was There's gonna say exactly yeah. I was gonna say so like to this idea of like when people are trying to be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So then that usually like pulls through above all else and. The thing that drives me usually whenever I do artwork uh, tends to be, basically tends to be uh, technical, right? Yeah. I like yeah. technicians. I like people who clear, are very good at clearly giving me an idea of what they're trying to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so whenever I see um, people that do this really well, like have like the mastery of what they do, uh, it mm -hmm. really sings to me. And um, it's always been true for me. Um, throughout my career. And the thing that I enjoy uh, outside of that would just be also making something that is uh, like, like basically have some appeal at some level, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And yeah. so, so like I have this technician aspect of me as well as the, the appeal aspect. Yeah. And I think that's what, those are the two main forces that drive a lot of what I do. And um, it's, it's kind of like you were saying like, cause if I was just, just to copy paste, um, one person style because I felt like that's all I needed to do or I don't mm -hmm. know how to do anything else. Uh, I think you're right. I think most people would catch on to that. I mean, people tend to do this often. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have, I, I see people who paint like just like a very specific artist that I know. Mm -hmm. And I have, sometimes I have students that do this and then I always encourage them. Well, you know, it's a good start, especially when you're first getting started, you want to kind of like emulate somebody so you can get some bearings. Yeah. But the solution is that you should then look at all the other artwork that you like from all the different other artists that are out there and see how yeah. you can combine those because that's, that definitely will sing to to your core, like you are saying, right? Versus just um, like always copying one person's <laughs> style, right? And mm -hmm. I agree with this, man. I agree with this premise uh, quite a bit. Uh, Have before you noticed we... anything like that, Adam, in your students? What's that? Have you noticed anything like that in your students, Adam? Uh, students that will gravitate a lot towards like uh, anime, for instance, or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, very often. And uh, and I, I even did a video on this on my on my channel at one point, uh, talking about manga, talking about anime, and where a lot of teachers very often would would have the opinion that anime or manga is not real art, right? And my argument to that is that uh, it is an art. It's, but do you have those fundamentals? Because with fundamentals, having a core in anime is a brilliant core because there's such a richness and a di diversity and a culture involved behind it. But if you're just copying, if you're just doing the, the, the sur if you're only capturing the surface and trying to copy an anime cartoon, a manga cartoon, if you're trying to copy somebody else, at the beginning, when you're just trying to get yourself drawing, you're just trying to, you know, expose yourself to the word of world of art and get yourself, you know, drawing, then that's great. But when you want to actually take it to a more professional level, you've already initiated yourself into the art, but now you want to bring those fundamentals back into it so that you can use so everything you've built up, everything you've learned as far as the culture of anime is concerned, can be applied afterwards. Once you've gone full circle and you brought those fundamentals back in it breathes that new life and style and i think that it's incredibly valuable because anybody like i'm i'm in my 40s now but you know my age and younger very often have a bias against things like anime 
for instance. They think, oh, it's not real art. You know, it's you, you want to do you want to paint like the classic artists and stuff like that. And that's fine for you. But your entire audience love anime. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the irony of like probably the same instructors that you're referring to. Um, yeah. Some of them actually probably love some animes. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. like uh, a lot of the people that are very critical always love very specific animes, you know? And I'm like, well, why is it good then? Or mangas, rather. You know, these same people love Akira. You know, yeah. it's like, and they love Ghost in a Shell. It's like, yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are animes, bro. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh. And so, but to your point, like, I, I think that the it all depends on the context, right? Because yeah. uh, I think if you're working on something like Akira, for sure, you got to, like, actually have some strong understanding of fundamentals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, because a lot of that is... Like, like I was looking at some of the, like the old manga drawings and I was like, dude, what the heck? <laughs> you know, like some of the yeah. drawings are incredible, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Miyazaki films, like those backgrounds oh, are painted beautifully. Course, yeah. Right. So yeah. it's like, it's kind of like hard to just be, it's, it's hard to live in a vacuum and just say that these things are a problem. I think what usually happens in those situations is that, uh, that, that those students only do like that kind of like artwork and it's very mm -hmm. like typical and it's very like, um like what you would expect like high schoolers will probably still be doing you know and so yeah. it's, it's it's more treated like some sort of amateurish or immature approach but it's like no yeah. you, you could de definitely do it in fact yeah. i encourage my students if they really like that style then they they should just demonstrate um that they can be really good at it uh in fact i always use examples of people that i know who are really good at these very things and so you should look at these people because these are like the, the killers, man, of these, yeah. this genre. And you shouldn't yeah. just be looking at, you know, like the the or traditional stuff. But even then, or like the, the stuff that everybody else looks at, you should try to like move it around. But even then, um, I'm always like, you know, but there's even like just simpler styles out there that people just like, you know, you just got to yeah. figure out what it is that you want and then just uh, go for it, you know. Uh, yeah. I will I will, I will, will say before we kind of, I think we should jump to the next subject. I don't know if, we, sure. if there was another one, right? And so, but before that, I don't know if there was like any contention, if there was anybody who had uh, varying opinions in our chat, Mike. I don't know if you saw that about what we said. So maybe you can comment on what might have been said. That like, I think some people might have had some comments. I don't want to. I don't want to make it feel like no, it's nothing, just me. Nothing like that. Okay, we have cool. questions though. Okay, yeah. cool. Maybe we could take a little break and answer some questions then. Yeah, I just don't want to make it feel like it's just me and Adam just talking the whole time. Uh, oh yeah, yeah I, I definitely sure. want to. You know. Get anybody's. You opinions. could tell. I could tell by the conversation that we could go on on this for Absolutely, hours. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. That's why I was asking how much time you got, man. <laughs> yeah. I can I can push it a bit further. I'm okay. Okay. I'm, right, not, cool. I'm not in a rush. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink some smoothie while you ask some questions, Mike. Oh yeah. And right, people are asking like, who's that third guy? Get him out of here. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's Mike. He's uh he's always he's a friend of the stream. Most of you guys right. who hang out, you guys know who Mike is. If not, yeah, this Mike. Uh, he usually helps me moderate if if I feel like, um, especially in this circumstance where it's not not just me, uh, yeah. I can I can usually use an extra hand. So he's helping us out. Yeah. So, so go I'm ahead, Mike. Mike's here. Okay, so Adam, you got a question. Um, do you have any opinions about Art Center? Um, I actually did a video on it. Um, and my my video was actually titled Art uh, Art Center or Art Station. Are you talking about the school? Are you talking about the? Uh, are you talking about the? My question. Website? Mike went back to play Overwatch. Chat. No, I didn't. Got him. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm got not playing him. nothing. I'm watching. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. It was from the from the chat. So all it was is uh, they're asking about your opinions on the school. I assume. Oh, Art Center. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I, I thought you were talking about. I I mistook that with Art Station. I'm not sure. I I haven't heard a lot of feedback on Art Center, so I'm not completely sure. I don't think I could answer that. Honest. Yeah. Um, how about we loop back and ask, uh, what, what, who, who are some of your biggest, uh, art influences since AJ went into his? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, I'd say as of late, I grew up a huge Frazetta fan. I've been a huge fan of Frazetta growing up. Um, I played a big influence on my work, uh, artistically and compositionally, um, as well as Norman Rockwell from a visual storytelling perspective. However, visually, for when it comes to an aesthetic, um, Guillermo de Toro plays a huge role uh, uh, in my influence. Uh, Gisław Bekszynski, the Polish artist, uh, again, a huge, huge, huge influence to me. Uh, but most of all, 
is Hidetaka Miyazaki. Uh, the Souls series, I think, as a teacher and as an artist, it, playing any Souls game, Sekiro included, uh, is the embodiment of every fundamental thing I love about art. And uh, I, I literally, when I play, I'll play, I'll spend about 30 minutes playing and then I'll put my joystick down and just stare at the work of art. I think it's absolutely beautiful and it has a huge influence on me, big time. Yeah, I, um, I feel like the Dark Soul games uh, or that whole genre of games really sings to me too. Remember I was talking yeah. about like um, games I, I love uh, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't work on and games that I don't like that I would love to work on. <laughs> um, Dark Souls is is both Fighters. games yeah. that I like and games that I would love to work on. Yeah, and there's very few games yeah. that are like that that I feel like I could see that too. That that for, especially from a creature designer, I could definitely see working on something like that. That'd be yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, I um, I was just thinking about it after GDC. Actually, I was like, oh, dude, I should see if I can reach out to them, yeah, <laughs> do some yeah. contract work. You know? Hell yeah. Um, but I would love uh, I would love to to work with them in any yeah. capacity but like but it's it's like yeah it's, it's a, a great example of um of what you call it of of both the yeah. things that i like and again like going back to this idea of like you know context matters but also your opinion matters like that's my opinion like i mm -hmm. love i love those games yeah a lot you're, um, you're a glutton for punishment yeah, I, I like the, the premise of those types of games of like, it's not easy, but it's not unjustly hard, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's no, it's, it's the, it strikes a perfect balance, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, you, you deserve the punishment, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You shouldn't have been rushing in. What's wrong with you? Have no, you learned but it's, nothing? It's also, but uh, Miyazaki, even, uh, Miyazaki even said it himself. It's, uh, it's, it reflected on, the, on life itself that without, a, without friction, without challenge, you don't get that euphoria of accomplishment, right? And I even that could even reflect in. I just heard it recently too. Who was it that I was listening to? Crap. Um, I was listening to somebody. Can't remember who. Who was talking about how in life you need friction. In life you need difficulty. Uh, oh yes, it was. Uh, was I was Neil deGrasse Tyson actually and he was talking about how <laughs> uh, things need to be difficult they need to be difficult to because a lot of people won't push themselves through that difficulty and when you do it's a rite of passage it's showing other people that you've reached a certain you've achieved a certain quality and you overcame a certain obstacle so it's a testament to your your your, your paying your dues so to speak mm -hmm. and when you can overcome those difficulties uh it's a legitimate and authentic achievement that translates into the rest of your life. It kind of redefines your belief in self and helps you move forward. And that's what the games do. You, it might take you two days to get it bossed down. You might have, you know, split three joysticks in half to get it, but you'll remember the experience and it mm -hmm. means something to you. You have that re real true sense of accomplishment apart from like World of Warcraft where they pretty much hand everything to you, right? And you go, yeah. oh, well, it's done and you walk away and you forget about it. Right, so it wasn't yeah. like that in the past. The very beginning was a challenge, <laughs> yeah, um, and it was very monotonous to do a lot of the things. But it was it was very much a challenge. But it's yeah. like, but they were like, you know, they want to like reach a larger user base. They had to uh, simplify it, you know. And how did that work out for them? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's actually working out great for them. It's just it's that. There. Not yeah, like it, it's just that not as good as it was in the past, but it's it's yeah. still a money maker, man. They have like a staff of like over a few hundred, man. Like it's it's definitely very yeah. valuable to them. Um, yeah, from an economical standpoint, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my point. Like, remember, you got to context matters, right? Like, if we're thinking yeah. like like my opinion on it, yeah, I I hear what you're saying. You know, mm -hmm. like I stopped playing it for the very reasons that you probably have contention with, right? But like yeah. my point is, is that. Uh, it worked out overall. Like, you know, when the game goes, like when they announced that they're going to make Diablo, like uh, one of the newer games in Mortal uh, Mobile, you know, people flipped out. And I agree with that sentiment of like, what are you doing? Like announcing this at like BlizzCon. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense. I mean, like a lot of their money is coming from games like Hearthstone, you know, and mobile uh, games. Mobile games are very lucrative as much as, you know, authentic quote gamers don't care for it there's the a bottom huge line, the market bottom line, right yeah, yeah there's a lot of people like, like play games only mobile 
you know, and okay. they are gamers too. You know what I mean? Like they're not the PC master race. Sure. Whatever. It's <laughs> but, true. I mean, when I was at EA, um, their console games were, they were, they were bleeding money from their console games. The, what kept EA from going under was their mobile department. Yeah. And so, so anyway, but like, um, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying though. Um, mm. and so, uh, we'll we'll jump into the next question. Let's move right on. Sure. Okay, I'm going in order in which they were received. Yeah, we'll take one the more question time. and then we'll jump to the next topic. And then, uh, don't worry, your guys' questions will be heard ultimately. We'll we're gonna have like a little Q and A session at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is Anthony. Is there a specific reason you're jumping around the picture when drawing everything bit by part instead of finishing one corner or something? Oh yeah, just because you, you get the the bigger picture done better. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you only focus on one part, um, this this is a ultimate problem I see happen with my students. They'll like they'll they'll submit work to me, and then I look at it, and then I'm like, oh yeah, your proportions are all whack, or your your details are all scattered, um, and it's because they they work on one part at a time. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like trying to like imagine like you're building a car, right? And then you, you, you start with like the steering wheel and you built the steering wheel. It works really nice. And you built it all, all in like this really beautiful way. And then you start to build the rest of the car. And then you realize the steering wheel is like doesn't fit or it's not ergonomic, you know? And then you're just like, crap, you know, now I got to go change the way that the steering wheel looks. But then, you know, you did the same thing with the wheels and then the wheels don't fit into the, like the under part of the chassis, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like yeah. everything, just, it, it becomes like this constant, like, fidgeting and mixing and fixing all the parts of the car until it all works and obviously if you, if you guys know anything about like auto like automotive construction like they don't do that they they design everything in mind right at least the good car designers right um and they think of it at a macro levels right they think about the shape of the car first right like you have these industrial designers but they also have the constraints of like the engines and they know that there needs to be a steering wheel and all these other things you know uh and and then they start to to go into the details, if you will, of like, okay, well now what can we like with these now set parameters? What can we like f with so that way it's like our car design? In fact, I saw my friend was making a comment that I actually do agree with, and he's talking about like the Teslas, and he was saying like, you know, like I feel like the Teslas they they should try a little harder of like making cooler cars um, because. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other, like the older models of cars that most people drive today, like the oil guzzlers, right? They're designed very specifically because of their engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Because they take gas, because there's pistons in a very specific location. Mm -hmm. You know, they tried all kinds of other ways of making cars, and this just seems the best. Yeah. They're like, well, you know, with with electric cars, there's this opportunity that he was talking about, like, of changing that. You know, and I was like, yeah, I actually do agree that there might be a point there, you know? And um, I think I think also I understand why they're, like, probably not going too unconventional because, you know, um, if you're going to try to get people to buy into it, they kind of don't want to drive the only car that looks super weird, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And But at the same time, like, if you can just design it in, like, such a badass way that, like, it becomes the opposite problem that you're like, no, you're driving the car that everybody wants, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's there's a case to be made there, too. But yeah. getting to the point of the question, like the reason why I jump around is because I'm trying to solve the bigger problems. I'm not trying to solve yeah. small problems. And, um, you know, you want to you want to always focus on doing stuff like this, because if you yeah. if you don't like if you're like curious to why I'm doing it and, and it might mean that you don't do it. Uh, this probably explains why you have these feelings of like you feel like your painting is getting out of your control or you have these feelings of like you, you thought you had an idea what your painting was about. But then as you started to refine it, uh, it starts to look completely different than you anticipated. Yeah. Like the whole I, I saw it in my mind, but as I worked on it, it didn't come to fruition kind of problem that I hear a lot. You know, uh, this, this these are some of the reasons and these are some of the symptoms that occurs from people who don't jump around or flip their canvas or like always stay zoomed out you know this is these are the common symptoms yeah it's funny you're saying that because that translates into many different arts there's the this famous ted talk with this uh, uh british guy a, a pianist and composer who was talking about the learning curve of pianists 
and they start it's funny whenever i see pianists <laughs> yeah i, know, I, know. I have a little penis too but no but, um <laughs> he's talking about the learning curve yeah, right? you, you, you took it there man we're all mature yeah right? you're, you're, you're supposed to be the older wiser sage here and look at you how dare you <laughs> yeah yeah screw that <laughs> But no, but um, he was talking about how when we first start, we start with every beat, right? Dun, 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 dun. He calls it yeah. impulses. And then we go to every second. So dun, 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 dun. And then every fourth, every eighth, et cetera. And he goes, it's not until you've reached that point. This is with his students where you'd reach the point where you, the entire song becomes one movement from the first note to the end, right? And that's exactly what you're doing with your painting. It's an entire movement. And that's why you're bouncing around because you're not just focusing on the moment, you're focusing on everything. And he says, it's ironic because that's exactly when students usually hit puberty and go, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, <laughs> they finally got somewhere and then they decide to abandon it. But it's very much the same theory. It's, it's seeing a work of art, not as a series of single impulses, but as an entire movement, right? If for lack of a better analogy. Dope. I like it. Yeah, I um, I think you're right too, man. Like I always tell people, it's um, it's really uh, you want to focus on macro level stuff. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like the bigger picture. And I get it, man. Like a lot of people, I think in general, like that's just the problem, right? As we have yeah. as a society and culture, like everything needs to be done like right away. It has to be super fast and quick. Um, a lot of my students get surprised, Michael included, right? Like Michael probably can talk a little bit about this uh, from a student's perspective. Like, remember when we had a class and I was like, really like, like, bro, you got to like study, you got to like, mm -hmm. uh, take your time. You got to stop saying that, you know, stuff because he's, he, in the class, I was like, you got to work on your values you know, you got to work on your forms. And he's like, dude, I already know my forms. Right. Mm -hmm. I, like, I practiced them a lot. Like, I don't think that's it. I'm like, no, no, it's definitely it. And <laughs> we had like a really like back and forth, you know? And, but I, yeah. you know, as a teacher, I know that he's, it's just harder for him to see it. And so then I did a paint over and I was like, look, dude, I'll show you what mm -hmm. good forms look like. And I did yeah. that on his painting. And then he was just like, like at that point he realized like, I can't argue against this because AJ is showing me literal proof of what he's talking about, mm -hmm. you know? And I think the beauty of art, we can do that as instructors, you know, it's yeah. unlike just tell people we can show them. Yeah. Um, and so then he was just like, Oh wow. What the, and then after that, um, he like completely flipped his his perspective on it, and now mm -hmm. he 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 takes uh, a lot of the criticism even more seriously than he did before. He, it wasn't like he didn't take it but seriously before, but there was definitely some resistance. But after he realized that okay, I think AJ might know what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, he started to to do the very things that I asked of him. I, he started to study more like like viscerally, and mm -hmm. he started improving rapidly because of it. And yeah. so, I mean, Mike, if you want to talk more about it. You kind of like threw me under the bus and then complimented me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're not unique in I this. Every, everybody everybody falls into this trap, including yeah. myself. It's just that whenever it's like when we were talking about earlier, right? When like you know people who complain about everything and then and then they start getting good at the very thing, they start to complain less because they start to see the truth a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was very much like this myself, so it's not yeah. like I'm saying this as someone who's never had contention with somebody that gave me feedback. Oh. No, and a lot of people don't, as teachers, very often what we're teaching is not what we are better at them. It's we're actually, we, we've, we're teaching from experience where we know to point out these issues because we we've read into them, them ourselves. Yeah. We understand the value. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Talk about your experience. Sure. I think it'll be helpful. Yeah, insightful. Absolutely. Yeah. So from the perspective of the student, I've, uh, I've now done AJ's mentorship three months in a row. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've made some pretty tremendous uh, improvements, but I still have some place to go, of course. Um, and I think the main thing that changed, AJ kind of alluded to it, is uh, like li really listening to the advice that my superiors are giving me yeah, and then r running with it. And yeah. so when AJ tells me my proportions are off, I'm like, oh, okay, let me go figure that out. If he yeah. tells me, you know, your values suck. At first, yes, I was like resistant to it. I was like, nah, man, like I put hours in, you know, before I even took your mentorship. Yeah. Uh, and then it was like, he made it clear to me. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, I really don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing. Let me go try to fight, figure out how to know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just investigate. And I start, you know, learning how to learn. And I feel like the, the biggest big, thing yeah. that helped me is uh, the, learning how to study and then apply it. And it didn't happen overnight. It was it's difficult yeah. to, like, figure out how to, like, am I actually studying something? Am I really breaking this th down and getting an understanding and then testing it, you know, and 
when that's successful, it, you mm-hmm. make pretty big leaps in your uh, growth as a student. Um, mm-hmm. And when you're not, then you get some evidence on how to change your approach in order yeah. to make those leaps later. Um, and so I have like new insight on how to how to improve myself. And I feel like um, I feel like I'm making some some good effort. You know, you're also, didn't start that way. you're also saying something else that matters a lot is that art, learning art is physical as much as it is mental, right? And it's the act of physically yeah. doing something with your hand. You go, oh, okay. You know, like, and, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you can go and buy 6,000 gum roads, but if you don't actually apply it, if you don't actually physically experience that with your, with your hands and with your body, then that, that lesson doesn't sink in. Right. And you actually have to physically experience it to go, oh, maybe I do have shit to fix. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's multiple things that like uh, I'm sure other students I've, I've heard this through my peers uh, in the class. There's a couple of things that I'm, I myself had to push through. Mm-hmm. But uh, two of the main ones is one. Uh, I had a big problem with uh, hand pain early on that was mm-hmm. affecting my values. Uh, so I was like pushing way too hard and mm-hmm. using like bad technique yeah and i had to like really investigate and work on that specifically for a little bit and that made that made my values better because i i started having better control over the pressure that i I intended Mm -hmm. Um, and i ended up being able to paint for longer hours because my hands didn't hurt when i was done yeah that so that that helped me tremendously and then the second thing that i'll tell is um when it comes to uh something aj calls uh positive procrastination i was really bad with that so I would I would do things that I thought was helping me with my art uh-huh. or helping me move forward, but really it was just procrastination. I was avoiding the main thing, which is doing the art, like studying, testing, painting, yeah. and yeah. doing it often. A good example um, of this would be like staying on Pinterest for like four hours, right? Like, yeah, exactly. of course you should be gathering reference, but <laughs> at four and hours you, in, you got to like realize you're not yeah. gathering reference anymore. You're collecting art. And that's yeah. different. Yeah, and Adam just alluded to that too. So the same thing is like collecting the gum roads. Like yeah, you think absolutely. you think that you're you're doing something positive for your growth by collecting these tutorials, even if you're watching them. But if you're not actually applying it, you're just procrastinating. Yeah, it's positive procrastination. It's actually a good way to break that down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, it's it's a trick. It's an illusion. You're not yeah. actually getting better. You're just watching people tell you how to get better, but you're not putting the practice in. I always yeah. use the example of like. Uh, if I tell you to do like all these different types of workouts to get stronger and more fit and tell you the kinds of foods you should eat to get more um, healthy, but mm-hmm. then you don't do any of that, like, like yeah, sure, you have the wisdom and the knowledge, but you didn't do anything to <laughs> acquire the health and fitness, right? Like, yeah. eventually, you got to do a push-up, you know what I mean? And uh, a lot of people tend not to do the push-ups, and then they're like, I, I, I watch a lot of stuff, I study this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, but how many push-ups have you done? Oh, well, I mean like two (laughs) and i'm like well then come on man like you can't say you've done the work if you literally have not done the work yeah i think chris oatley had mentioned once on his facebook i've quoted him before on my channel too it's is if you subscribe to a fitness magazine and read an entire fitness magazine every day for an entire year but you never go to the gym will you actually get in better shape yeah that's great (laughs) you gotta go to the gym right you gotta do the work yeah chris oatley right shout out to chris oatley shout out to chris all right. Um, let's let's should, jump. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, you want to finish it? I, I just remembered. I remembered something that I think will help uh, some of the students. And I also want to hear what you think, Adam. Mm-hmm. So one of the things early on that I I noticed as well is that um, we constantly hear this thing about don't polish turds. Yeah. Right? As as students. Yeah. And I think that was part of uh, the reason why I would like start something and not finish it, mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. or throw away paintings often. And what I found is that. Um, when you're a student, a beginner, and you're trying to really like get get some real growth and improvement, mm-hmm. everything that you do is going to feel like a turd. And if you continue to not polish turds early on, then you're not finishing anything as well mm-hmm. by consequence. So yeah. what I, what it helped me a lot is like starting to not throw things away, not uh, stop, and to just keep pushing through and keep painting things. Yeah, and just get the the qu- uh, quality and quantity up, and allow myself to paint turds and polish them. Because later on they won't be turds. Yeah, but I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll jump into yeah absolutely I'll actually add a an Anthony uh, a lesson into that uh, where what meta yeah yeah absolutely oh <laughs> shout out to Anthony here um, where um, 
when you focus, it's it's a it gets right back to the fundamentals that even masters like like uh, Sargent would use. Whereas, uh, if you capture form, you capture likeness. If those major forms and those major statements, the fundamental statements you make within the first, let's say, two minutes of a piece, if they sing, you're on the right track. And if you're 10, 12, 15 minutes into a painting and you're still noodling with it, trying to get it to work, chances are it might not work. You might just need to scrap it and start over. Uh, and what we did, very, like you say, polishing a turd, you kind of think that through rendering, through detailing, you're going to make it work. And that's, that's the trap. You want to make sure that that fundamental form statement works first, just using basic shapes, basic values, basic design statement. And then if that works, the rendering will polish it. But you, the, the turd is where you say, ah, you know, it looks kind of meh, whatever now, but maybe after spending another 16 hours, I might get it to work. No, drop it. Drop it now and, and look at the fundamental construction of what you've made and ask yourself, is that working? And if that works, then you can detail it as far as you want. And if you're sergeant, you might not need to detail it much at all, right? That statement might be enough. Yeah, so to to actually counter that, I actually uh, agree with the premise, right, ultimately. Because yeah. I think that works for people who are at an intermediate level, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and I like people who aren't necessarily really really great, but also people who aren't like new to the to the ball game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's something that because like Mike was talking about something that I realized, and I actually like because he was making that point, and I was like, wait, so this solution isn't a good solution. Uh, obviously, context matters again, right? And so yeah. when I I was like, wait, you actually need to finish paintings. Uh, and the context of this was not as like you're going to have good paintings, like to your point, right? Like, mm -hmm. I agree. Like, you have to have a strong, like, I, I think in the first 10, 15 minutes of a painting, I will know whether it's going to succeed or not, you know? Yeah. Um, and I tend to just ignore the paintings that, uh, or designs, and this is especially for commercial work, I tend to ignore yeah. the ones I know are going to fall apart. Uh, mm -hmm. After like 10, 15 minutes, even now it's getting faster these days. I can do like five minutes. I can, oh, yeah, this is going to be garbage. But, I realized that with a lot of my students who were just like not finishing paintings because they would take that statement as like religious law, you know? Yeah. And I was like, no, like this is causing a whole different problem, right? Yeah. And I was like, you know, and the solution and the way that I think about this is that you aren't making portfolio pieces. You are trying to learn your weaknesses. This yeah. is the best way to do that. You have to take a painting from start to finish. And I gave like solutions like don't give yourself like more than let's say five hours, like spend five hours total, right? So that way, again, you don't waste time spending like 20 to 30 hours on a painting that's really going nowhere, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. at least when you spend that five hours in the trenches, you start to learn like, oh man, it was really hard to get these lines right. Or it was yeah. really hard to render this form. Or man, mm -hmm. like I think the overall idea was garbage. Like I need to get better at that, you know? Yeah. And then and then when you do that, when you start to like go into un like, you know, undiscovered areas, that's when you start to ask uh better questions, you know, mm -hmm. like better questions than what brush do I use? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or what software should I use or what tools should I use? You start asking questions that are a lot more um like you're sniping them in 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 rather than just kind of guessing. And yeah. so uh with Mike and many other my students, like they tend to do this, right? I had a student who uh I was like, you got to finish your work, you know? Yeah. And they would. And once they do, they were like, oh, man. Like, I remember you were talking about how we should have our silhouettes be very clear at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And now I understand why, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because as yeah. I was painting this and as I was drawing it, I had no idea what that was, that shape that I just drew in there. Because I was mm -hmm. like, I'll figure it out later kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, and I was like, exactly. So now you learned that you won't figure out it later. If you don't know what it is, then you're not going to know what it is later, you know? Yeah. And I feel like at a, like those of you who are more in the beginner, closer to the intermediate, this is better advice. You should, you should actually take your paintings a little bit further, but then when it gets to like intermediate to cl closer to pro, then I'm with Adam a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Because, because point. at that point you are like a somewhat of a skilled artist and you might be falling into bad habits and traps of your own making that yeah. you've learned and earned over the years of training. But when you're really starting out and you don't like, you don't even know how to like render a cube. I don't think that's great advice because it's like, you should render the cube. 
You yeah. know, you, you should definitely like render the like a face, draw a face badly so you can look at it and face it like <laughs> pun intended, you know, and you can face it directly and be like, oh, man, like I need to really work on so and so things and and make a catalog of a small things. Don't do like a million different things, right? Like if you're right. working on faces, try to learn how to draw maybe just the skeletal structure, like just the skull, right? Mm-hmm. And then move mm-hmm. on to like drawing the muscles of the face and then move on to yeah. the details of the of that and then learn how to draw it artistically. Like look at, like I was telling Mike that he should look at comic book artists, right? Because they're really mm-hmm. good at making really uh, aesthetic looking faces, you know? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, you start there, then you come back to anatomy because then you start to see kind of where everything starts to match. And mm-hmm. eventually, yeah, you will get to that stage where, yeah, if you spend like an hour and you're just feeling like your design's garbage, that's where the other vice starts to kick in where you should... You should have a better sense of what's going on uh, mm-hmm. earlier than later. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at your painting, and it's making me think of Master Wong. Do you know who Master Wong is? Uh, is it the guy that does like those um, self defense videos? Yes, I and he so. always said, <laughs> I quote him all the time. He goes, you, you just take the guy, you break his fingers, you grab his scrotum, yeah. you lift it over his head, and you flip him twelve times. It's so easy. So yeah, it's so, so easy. easy. Oh, so and easy. The hell is easy about that? Yeah, I didn't even see what you did. Yeah, no, so you, you just made me think of Master Wong. Here. Yeah, he does I look like it. him. I, I do yeah. feel like he does look like him. It's funny because like my, I might have subconsciously been just drawing him this whole time. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So since we've already kind of spent a good amount of time talking about the yeah. first subject, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have like two other subjects. Um, which uh, of the yeah. two do you? I think we could probably do one more, right? Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm good until a, I'm good for another twenty minutes. Is that okay. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, then we, we should just we just hold on to those other topics, and then and we should just go straight into Q and A and just answer sure. all the rest of the questions. Because if we sure. if we go, I have a feeling if we go to other topics, we're not going to have questions. No, we're we're we we have the gift of the gab. Clearly, this is yeah. <laughs> next next stream's going to have to be nine hours long for sure. Yeah, we'll do a twenty four hour stream. Woo! Okay, let's do it. <laughs> stream all right. in. <clears throat> is there any yeah, artists you guys really like? Oh God! <laughs> wait, 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 what? That's, like I'm just in general? Questions. Just in general? I guess, I, is there any artists you guys like recently? Oh, okay, that's, that's a little specific. bit more specific. A little more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like a lot. Um, I'm in the, I'm in the camp of like I've been collecting artists without knowing their names. So let me go into my profile and then I'll just start naming them. Um, and I'll show you guys too. Actually, let me let's do a little bit of shout out. Well. So you guys could see my screen, so you'll be able to see this. So this guy for sure, uh, Arian Orberto. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of his stuff right now. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Miki Benz. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but this guy um, does these amazing like 3D um, models that look like paintings. Mikey Benz. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it, but like if you look, like look how dope that is, man. It's so cool. Um, I'm sure you guys can't see it unless you're on the stream, right? Like it's gonna take you guys 30 seconds to see it, <laughs> Adam and Mike. But yeah, trust no, me, it's it. good. Trust me, it's good. Ooh, that is nice, yeah. And so, nice. um, in fact, I'll send this link to you guys in the Discord of this mm, model, nice, because it is really cool. So anyway, yeah, you can tell it's like yeah, nice, loose, confident renderings, very pretty. Yeah, well, there's like uh, the other guy who does like this 3D. Oh, what? Yeah, so <laughs> I was waiting for you to have that. Oh, reaction. is that a 3D painting? <laughs> yeah, what so it's a 3D, 3D model, but it's like painted. Yeah, and then this guy does a lot of stuff. Something. Yeah, because I'm in game dev right now, right? I'm in game dev mode. I'm learning a lot more programming yeah. and game design and stuff. <gasps> and so, like, uh, I've been trying to find ways to maybe make my game stand out and somehow, in uh-huh. some way. And finding stuff like this was like super helpful. What so if you find like a painting, a game that looks like a painting, and it's like from me, uh, you'll mm-hmm. know my influences very clearly from the stream. But uh, that that would be a couple. But if you want to know directly, just go to my art station and just go to my likes, and then bam, you'll know mm-hmm. <laughs> like all the people that I like recently, because it'll be my recent likes. <laughs> you know. There you go. Yep. Uh, how about you? Uh, well, I mean, I named a few before. I've actually kind of shortlisted to, I, I find that artists that inspire me aren't, it's not always for technical reasons. I find I've been a lot more attracted to, um, although some are very technically strong. Um, well, a lot of the souls art is a very good example. Although I, you know, I look at like, I have the art books and stuff like that. And technically they're sometimes a bit 
sloppy and sometimes mm -hmm. a little bit weak, but creatively. I love artwork that has creative freedom to it. I've been yeah. revisiting a lot of Brian Froud's work, um, John Howe, you know, they've collaborated, Alan Lee, those traditional fantasy illustrators. And a couple of my students, actually, uh, uh, Martina, um, <laughs> uh, Martina Fakova, who's uh, one of my students, I'm a huge fan of her work, and she inspires me a lot, but uh, she's so refined that it intimidates me. Uh, I tend to I, I tend to have to remind myself that I'm a looser artist than her, but I'm a big big fan of her art, and she's just the quality really grabs me a lot. Um, but I'm not actively going out seeking inspiration these days. I'd like to keep myself in my bubble because I find that I, if I, if I get too caught up in other artists, it can make me lose my footing sometimes. So I tend to like to 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 seclude myself a little bit when I'm in my own creative headspace and not reach out too much because that tends to throw me off base. Yeah, of I, course, I can Anthony that. Jones. I mean, Jesus, you know, you see what you the top all bar right, right there. All right, right, all right. <laughs> all right, get your tongue out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it easy, dude. All right, all right, yeah, okay. There all you right. go. Uh, other question. <clears throat> Do you guys know any highly successful young artists, like 21, 22 years old? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't really focus on the age of yeah, artists. In, unless it's, like, very clearly, like, obvious. Um, I think Adon would be one. He's, like, I think he's 21 years old. Uh, let me find his stuff right now. I don't know. Adon. Grozio. Like, when I first met him, he was, like, 19. And that was, like, a few years ago. So he's definitely, like, mm -hmm. 21 or something. Um, here, I'll put it in the chat for you guys so you guys can see it, and then I'll show it on my screen. Uh, Ad Adon's pretty young, and he's he's remarkably good. Um, <clears throat> so he's a good example of somebody who like was doing this type of stuff when he was a kid. Like when I met him, he was saying like, "Oh, you know, like I was like making like paper guns when I was like like in his early teens." Mm -hmm. Like he would like cut like go to like the websites, find the schematics of like guns, and then he would just like cut them out and make like cardboard paper versions of them. Hmm. And he would just do that all the time. And so then when he got his tools on like a real three D program like Maya, yeah. like obviously it was off to the races, and he just did that for years, and then mm -hmm. he just got really good. So I like to use him as a good example of like even even though it seems like where did he get the time? Well, he he did it at a very early age, you know. And it's like when we look at these really big uh, uh, artists who are very, really good uh, in the past or like other kind of like acclaimed people, for instance, like Mozart, uh, Mozart, Mozart, um, who people say, well, he was like really young when he composed his first songs, you know? <laughs> well, you know, you got to look at the fact that his father was a great musician. His sister was a great musician. He was in a family of musicians. Uh, he was also um, taught at an early age how to mm -hmm. make music. And he did that at the prime of his youth, and he did it all throughout his youth, right? Uh, you mentioned Frazetta. Frazetta's mm -hmm. the same thing. Like, he used to draw so much when he was a kid at his grandma's that uh, he would they would run out of toilet paper. He would draw on the toilet paper. Yeah. And this is at, like, the age of three. You know, yeah. did you do that when you were three? No, right? None of us did. <laughs> That's why we're not Frazetta, you know? I, and, I was discovering my belly button at three. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so, like... Um, the, the age thing, like I said, doesn't matter as much because ultimately you still have to put a lot of time, right? And yeah. um, there's very few people, like, and they would literally be the outliers. So you don't want to compare yourself to these outliers, people who are just genuinely, like, gifted at the, the arts, who can draw as a baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but Frazetta is not an outlier. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that he wasn't extraordinary, but he's not. He put a lot of time in drawing. Like yeah. by the time he was 16. So imagine from that when you're three years old to 16, right? Where that's all you're supposed to be doing is taking in information. And all of the information he was taking in was drawing, right? Yeah. I would be yeah. shocked if he was terrible at drawing, you know? It would be weird if he was like not good at it. What is that, like 13 years of just hardcore drawing, mm -hmm. you know? In fact, he was so good at drawing. It was so like effortless to him. He didn't even want to be an artist, right? Because he felt like. He wanted to do other things. Like it's he just, wanted to be a baseball player. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it, because he just did it as a way to pass time. And obviously, yeah. if you do anything long enough, you get really good, even if it's just to pass time. You know what I mean? And um, so I would focus less on the age part and more about the time you've invested, right? I'll, I'll be yeah. more focused on 
like how much time you spent on something um, than how old you are. Because there are people who are much, much older who are really, uh, who've been working in the industries, whatever, but they're not nearly as skilled as someone who's, let's say, is younger because the younger person put essentially more time if, if, uh, like than they did in a real way, you know, like the types yeah. of things that they actually studied and vice versa, obviously. Obviously, there's people like Sid Mead, who was an artist since the beginning of time, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. is is impossibly good. Like, it's, we're never going to catch him, you know? I'll tell you something, too. There's this real, there's this real uh, kind of belief that kind of permeates itself into the art industry where if you haven't made a name for yourself by the time you hit your 30s man whoa dude you you've missed your stride and look (laughs) around at some of the most famous people on earth jk rowling walt disney leonardo da vinci these people weren't even known until they were in their 40s nobody even knew their name until they're in their 40s so don't beat yourself up there's this isn't a race you know uh, fame can come in your 70s if you apply yourself so, yeah i think like stan lee about. right like the marvel cinematic universe blew up when he was in his 80s or 90s really like, yeah he he um like marvel was always kind of like backpedaling man like they were always trying to um make money back they went bankrupt no a few kidding. times. yeah it wasn't successful until the marvel cinematic universe huh. and then and now like look at them they're buying back their ips because uh, Stan Lee would sell him because he was like trying to keep his company afloat. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was like a constant like dripping and failing of of, of different measures all the time yeah. until he was much much older. And then when you hit that fame, people go, "Oh, he's 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 a genius." Yeah, I've been doing this for how many years and nobody even knew. Don't worry about that. You know, that's don't don't preoccupy yourself with age, man. It's it's so completely irrelevant. And you know what? The difference between being twenty and forty. It's a blink of an eye. It's gone before you know it. So don't don't even don't even think about it for two seconds. Oh man, I thought about it for three seconds. Dang it! God <laughs> damn it! Oh, dude, I was stuck at four. Oh no! Yeah, I could see your painting. You screwed up. Five, you know, you screwed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I'm gonna take a break okay. from painting and drink my smoothie. Uh, go, ask the next one? question. I'll let Adam start this one. All right. You, you want me to ask it? No, no. He's gonna ask, and you're gonna you're gonna. I'm gonna pass the ball. Oh, sure. Yeah. Go. Go ahead. I'm going to mute right. myself too on here so that way I don't, you don't hear me slurping. All right. What do you think makes an illustration appealing? Uh, objective. Objective observation. I would direct your attention to Marco Bucci, who's a very good example. But he, he, he's on his channel. He, he really describes it well. When we look at imagery, we're not focused on details. We think we look at shapes. We look at values. We look at colors. We look at the big picture, kind of, kind of rehashing what we were talking about before. Um, that's what makes the major statement of a work of art. And um, like quoting again, Sargent, you know, if you capture form, you capture likeness. When you see somebody walking down the street, when you see an image that captures your attention, if you think about it objectively, you don't see detail whatsoever. You're looking at something from a distance, you're getting a caption of it and it catches your attention. Focusing on that big picture, is what grabs you and pulls you into a piece. Once you've grabbed a person's attention, once you've got them, then you keep them with details. You give them the reward of coming up closer and looking at your work. But you've got to remember the way you're going to attract a person's attention is not by adding detail upon detail upon detail. It's about capturing that major statement that makes people notice it and then keeping their attention with that detail. That would be my my summary of that. Wrong. All right, next God question. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded so... I, I tried to say it with conviction, but... Uh. No, that's that good. So that's good advice. Yeah, that's good advice. Bluff, yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, that's good advice. I don't do much illustration, so we'll just kind of leave it at there. Okay. <laughs> All right, you want the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Let's try to get through okay. them. How many more questions do we have? Um, I'm reading from the chat now. I, I was putting them down. So okay, cool. It could so be A couple 30. more? what the <laughs> day i don't know dude. i'm guessing all right, all right well, here we go um all right well how about this um just, just stop whenever you want uh i'm gonna let you guys like write down any questions you guys might have and then i'm gonna write questions end here and on the, in the chat and then when that happens that's any question after that doesn't count <laughs> i mean you could ask it but we're, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream after that, okay, that sounds good. <clears throat> all right go ahead and ask oh. questions folks in the stream what was your biggest takeaway from GDC? Um, oh, it's the same thing I get every every time I go to the event. I um, 
make a lot of friends you know mm. i like to go to the event to to chat with people to make new connections because whenever uh, i t- talk to my students about this because they always ask like why should we go to like events like, what's the purpose and i said well it's because there's only two things we can control and that's the quality of our work and the people that we know mm-hmm. you know and if you don't know anybody uh, it doesn't matter if your work's amazing <laughs> It's kind of like what Adam's saying, like, you know, some people aren't even known until like, you know, until they're in their 40s or even 50s or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not because they weren't good. There's some of these people that are really good. Uh, Like Kim Jong-ji is a good example. He's not like really old, but like he he was like well known in Korea, I think. But everywhere else, nobody knew who who the hell he was. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's only until he did that like really viral video of him drawing like miraculously that people were like, what? Who is this guy? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't like he just came out of nowhere. Like, he was doing that for years, you know? He just yeah. happened to document it, put it online. People saw it, and people loved it, you know? Yeah. And um, and so I go to GDC. I go to these events because of the, the very value that you get from making friends, talking to people, meeting people. Um, and then uh, in my, my perspective this time is that I'm trying to do more game dev. So I'm going there to make friends that are like gonna help me with game development. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. When I the first time I ever went, like the first few years that I went before, I went to to get an art portfolio review and try to get a job as an artist. You know, and that worked out. And so uh, I'm doing it again, but I'm not just gonna go there. I'm gonna go to like E3. We're gonna try to go to E3. I'm gonna go to like um, what you call it. Uh, I'll try to go to Seagraph. I'm definitely going to Lightbox. You know. Um, I'm going to events again, uh, but in a real way, like try to, to expand my, my network, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I usually tell people make friends. Don't just like do the networking game. Like if there's somebody that you meet that has a lot of power and a lot of, um, you know, pull, but they're like really jerk offs, then mm-hmm. just ignore them, you know, make friends because you might, there's definitely for every person like that, there's like a hundred people that are not like that, that are also as influencing or not. Um, yeah. like some people that are just like students, like be friendly to them as well, because one day they're not going to be students anymore. You know what I mean? No, they're going to be rock stars in their own right. And if you were nice to them genuinely, because you're not thinking uh, about what they can do for you now, but you're just thinking about how cool they are and how you guys get along, uh, as a consequence of making friends with someone like that, who may be driven and maybe as passionate as you are, they're going to ultimately get good too. A lot yeah. of my friends are all really good, you know? And I'm not talking yeah. about the people that I've made at these big events. I'm talking about the people that started with me. Like, we were, we were in the classrooms together, you know? A lot of them work for big companies and big projects now, you know, because mm-hmm. they were just like me. They were driven and they just put the time in and then they got really good and now they're working for all these great companies, you know, and they have a name yeah. for themselves. Like my buddy yeah. uh, Jason Hill, he designed a lot of the Apex Legends characters. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a guy I've known since I first started, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm really proud to see him, like, kick some butt now, you know? Like, I mean, he's always kicking butt, but, like, really getting noticed for his ass kickery, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And and so that's why you go to these events. That's why you should go to events in general, because you want yeah. to make friends, put your name out there, make people recognize you. Uh, I know a guy named Kenny because I used to go to BlizzCon, like, every year and show mm-hmm. him my portfolio, and I was trash. And the first year I showed him, he was like, yeah, you're trash. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then I, <laughs> like, I'm paraphrasing, of course. And then, yeah. like, the the next year I went and I was like, hey, remember me? I'm the trash artist. And he was like, hey, I remember you. And then I showed him my work. He's like, wow, you got better, man. Like, but it's still kind of trash. And I was like, all right, cool. And then the next year I did it again. But he just remembered me because it's just the way that I was, like, like I carried myself, the way I was trying to be super friendly. I was really receptive yeah. to the feedback. That's so important, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. He, we became friends. You know, like good friends. And yeah. I still talk to them to this day. And that's yeah. kind of how it is. It's just like you just be friendly and make friends as, as often as you can. You know, and if your focus is money, you know, I was I, I actually have a video on my plugging my own videos here. But uh, it was my friend Jimmy, who's who's a comic artist. And he, I was asked, I asked him that very question. He said, you can tell when you walk up to a table and somebody's just they sit. They, they have their they have their face in their drawing. They don't look up. They don't socialize. And when you come up to the table, they kind of look at you like, well, are you buying a piece or not? You know, that kind of, if you don't, if you're not going to buy something to waste my time, when your goal is to make money, when your goal is to 
make a profit from other people's presence, people can sense that. And people can see the difference between you being there to make cash and you being there to make authentic emotional connections with people. And it's the emotional connection that will make you memorable. It's the emotional connection that will that will eventually trickle down. So when you are a well-known artist, when your style and your and your technique is recognizable, mm -hmm. you can back that up with people saying, "Yeah, and he's such an awesome guy too," right? Yeah. That you want you want to be the the full package and making quote friends should be the reason why you go in the first place because that's what's going to make people ultimately remember you and that's what's going to build your name right yeah totally like it, it by by definition it's networking right yeah but like like you were saying and i got what i'm saying is but if you see it as like networking like raw networking like you're like yeah. some sort of like robot then yeah people can sense that but if you see it yeah. as i'm trying to make friends and i use the example of like even if there's somebody that could help you but you just don't get along with them yeah it's actually better not to just keep that commitment yeah you know it's just better just to um make friends with people that you get along with yeah and yeah. um and trust me there are more people that are awesome than there are people that are not awesome so yeah you guys don't have to worry too yeah. much about that <laughs> <clears throat> all right so let's see next one wrong oh, <laughs> damn yeah. it that's my turn <laughs> but but anton uh, wrote wrong too on the chat i just read that oh yeah um how to reflect a picture in photoshop how to reflect oh. what do you mean uh that's flip horizontally oh okay so that's very technical that should be easy um you just basically go to uh image uh, is it image? I haven't done it through the it's actual. Yeah, it's shortcuts. image. You edit keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah, and it's flip it to canvas keyboard. horizontal. But you can see that I have a shortcut. That's actually not the default shortcut. There is no shortcut. Yeah. Um, but that's it. where it's at. And then if you want to change the shortcut, you got to go to keyboard shortcuts, and then you got to go to uh, application menus, and this will simulate all the options that are up here. You'll see file edit image, file edit image, and then you go to image, and you just look for. Uh, flip horizontal and yeah. it's a little bit down there it's Im image rotation and it's right there and you can see shabam and control w is like a, i think a hockey for something else but it's a hockey or it's a thing that i never do so um yeah. you can change it to whatever you want uh, mine is yeah. control w yeah, and that, that's cool. the easy one that's the technical so okay next one aj what uh AJ, your stream processes are always start to finish. Do you ever do multiple thumbnails for the first stage anymore? Uh, not really. And it's a. And I like to preface this as it's a skill earned. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I only thumbnail if I'm drawing something I'm not good at. Like if you were to see me design something like a cat, I always like <laughs> these cats. Like if I had to work on like a new cat movie for whatever reason, uh, I would probably do a lot more sketches and thumbnails. Uh, because I don't know how to draw a cat. Um, not that I can't draw one. Like I would, I can have like an image and, and go for it. I'm sure I'll be all right. You know, it's that uh, I don't have a lot of skill in it, you know, but if it was to draw like a monster or creature of any kind, usually uh, I'll, I'll do all right. If it's like mm -hmm. uh, a character, like a people, even if they're a little bit stylized, it's not that big of a deal. Because I've done that professionally for many years, so I'm, mm -hmm. I have a, already a, a huge library of information that I can just extract from. Mm -hmm. The way that I like to compare this is is like muscle memory. You know, like you mentioned earlier about, and I thought this was great. Like that art is like a, not just a mental thing; it's also physical. Uh, mm -hmm. I see all things that we do as only physical activities. I, I think mental uh, is our definition for like separating the mind and the body right yeah. yeah but the reality is the mind is also a physical thing right like if you take a hammer to my arm and break my arm you know i i won't be able to use it right mm -hmm. but if you go to take a hammer to my brain and take out like a chunk out of my brain and let's say i still survive there would be parts of what i used to be able to do i can't do anymore you know like when people who have strokes they have these physical reactions that happen in their brain that actually turn off parts of their brain for life mm -hmm. or for for temporary amount of time you know oh, this and got dark really fast <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just the reality right and so like if you there's this guy who um got like impaled like through his head um and like a big chunk of his brain was gone but he was alive and well yeah and yeah. then and then he started to live his life and everything was pretty much the same except one thing was different he the his sense of empathy was gone 
because that part of yeah. his brain that helps function that was gone. So he yeah. started becoming more like angry. He started getting like more reckless. He started doing nefarious things. Yeah. And so anyway, so getting back to the, the art point of it, not to get too dark about the brain and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I like to think of that uh, premise that that's what I'm doing when I learn how to draw like faces, right? Mm -hmm. It's that I've collected a lot of information for my brain. Like it's like I've, you know, lifted dumbbells. Uh, like I could do pull-ups. I can do like 10 pull-ups like really easily, you know? Um, but not, not always. Like when I was first starting to work out, I could barely do like one or two, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when I trained, I got it to be able to do like 20 total, right? Mm -hmm. My max. But uh, even if I don't work out for years, I can still go and like do a pull-up because my muscles are there, right? Like the same thing with a bike, right? I can go ride a bike right now, even if I haven't rode like in years, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of that is still there. It's physically ingrained in my men mental state as well as the physical muscles are there allow me to do the pull-ups. Mm -hmm. So whenever I draw things that look like, wow, what the heck, you know, AJ didn't use any reference or whatever. It's like, no, 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 the reference is there. It's just all embedded in my mind. Uh, and going back to like when I actually have to use reference and use uh, thumbnails and sketches is to supplement the knowledge I don't have, the things that yeah. I don't, I have not earned, you know? And there's plenty. There's more things that I don't know how to do than there's things that I do know how to do. Yeah, it's course, just the, yeah. yeah, it's just the things that I do know how to do. It looks, it's really impressive. But it's like I've done it for so many years that it's it's an illusion, <coughs> right? Of of like magic skill. No, it's it's definitely all earned, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's why that's the way I approach it, and I t try to teach my students this too. Like, don't take it so personal, <laughs> you know. Sometimes yeah. people take their art abilities so personal, like something's wrong with them. Um, you wouldn't have that same conversation with a person who went into the gym for the first time and they mm -hmm. couldn't lift 500 pounds deadlift, mm -hmm. right? Like, no, of course not, right? Like, well, I haven't trained deadlift. Well, then maybe you haven't trained painting forms or maybe you haven't trained enough drawing people's faces without looking at them, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't done that enough. Maybe you're quantifying your lack of ability uh, incorrectly, you mm -hmm. know? And that's that's the way that I'm going to answer that question, you know, yeah. just like wh wh I only just think things to finish. I'm only painting things I've already know how to paint, you know. Mm -hmm. If I were to paint things I don't know how to paint, it would be a completely different story. Yeah, it requires a lot more. You're you're bringing more information to your brain that wasn't there already, right? So it requires a lot more focus for sure. Yeah, like like I said, cats. I can't draw cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you don't draw cats, so you can keep on saying that. As yeah. An example. Yeah. I'll, I think you still haven't learned. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I, I don't draw cats. Yeah. You I, actively avoid it, so you have this example. Anyway, yeah. I always um, like if I get a project <laughs> if like James Cameron's like I got this new cat movie, dude. Bruh. And I'm gonna pay you a million bucks to work on this yeah. project. I'm like I can't, man. I have this like this whole I swore, like, I lesson. Swore off it. Yeah. I have this whole lesson that re requires me not to be able to draw cats, dude. He's yeah. like, can't you change it to something else like dogs? I was like, no, cats. It has to be cats. <laughs> All right. Um, how do you feel about seeing images circulating around the internet that are photo bashed, but the general public thinks it's painted by hand and praises it above something like a master drawing? Uh, good question. I'll make this my last one, just because I have a student in the, in a couple of minutes. But um, okay. Uh, if the art, I've seen photo bash that looks awesome. I've seen photo bash that looks like crap. And it all comes, again, you know, I, I hate to sound like a, a broken record, but it comes down to the fundamentals. Um, if you understand the principles of perspective and lighting and atmosphere and value and color and texture and form, et cetera, and design, then you can make photo bashing look gorgeous. And if you don't, it's going to look like crap. And to have a bias against one technique or another is, if you're a traditionalist, then yeah, you might take offense to the, to the lack of physical craftsmanship with your own bare hands i personally like to craft i like to sculpt with paint that's that's my that's my 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 thing that's what that's what turns me on to drawing but um if you are good at photo bashing and if you don't if it's not just slapped on pictures if you've actually applied artistry over that then hey more power to you you can make it work you know that's called matte painting but um but if your fundamentals suck, then you can't replace a lack of artistic fundamental knowledge with pictures. That doesn't work. You can try, but it won't work, right? Wrong. Sorry. Duck. 
fuck. <laughs> no, that's yeah. I uh, I I will add to that. There was a time where people complained about oil painting. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? yeah. So there's always going to be like a thing that people get mad about. Like you get, if you guys are mad about photo bashing, wait till machine learning paintings come into play. Like mm-hmm. that, that's oh, going to be God, a whole yeah. new world of like hating on peeps. Like you mm-hmm. see that thing that Nvidia did, where like you can like just draw like shapes, and it's like that's a river, that's a boat, and that's some mountain, and it just mm-hmm. does it. Yeah, like uh, tools will always change and get better. Um, of course, focus less on the tools, man. Focus more on the output. And um, I I will say though, I usually do give advice like this when it comes to like photo bashing is like if what you're doing is easily re- like like learned and um, like replicable mm-hmm. like you could like just re- like replicate it again you know like if you do let's say you do a photo bashing thing right and you use all these tools and it was really easy for you to learn like you learned it in a year or whatever um, that very thing will be easily replaced eventually you know mm-hmm. so I agree that like photo bashing is its own like art but eventually like even your producer might be able to photo bash you know? Yeah. And so, so like if you are looking to be like a, someone who can survive the tides, um, definitely like stick to fundamental learning because that transcends the tools always. Yeah. I, and I'll add to that. We as artists are creators and our job is at the front lines of anything. We're, we're the ones who fashion things out of, we, we materialize things and that's, that's our gift. When it becomes automated, it's no longer a creative process. Artists will, at least the artists who were originally involved in that process will lose interest and they will move on to the next creative endeavor. That is the nature of who we are. And, you know, even whether you might agree or like or dislike um, uh, uh, Peter, what's his, the, the Canadian guy, Peter something or other. I don't talking know. about Mockenbacher or whatever? Yeah, the... the, the the, the teacher guy, uh, Peter. <laughs> oh, that guy, the teacher guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger. Uh, well, no, no um, <laughs> his name's slipping by me, but he was talking about the creative process at one point. He says, the thing about creative people is, art, artists and creative people is, they make new industries. They create new industries. And once, once that is created, then the business people come in and take over and run the show from that point on. And by then, the artists have already moved on to the next thing. Because that's what we thrive in doing. Whereas somebody who's more, who's, whose job is more data crunching and reusing existing data, that's not a creative job. An artist lose interest. So if, as soon as it becomes automated, it's no longer an artistic process. Then it's automated and artists have gone and moved on to the next, the next big thing. Oh, people are saying Peterson? Peterson. There you go. Jordan Peterson. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, Jordan yeah. Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. Mr. I Mr. thought we were talking about artists. My bad. No, yeah, by the way, I, I have huge yeah, I have huge disagreements with this guy. Um, oh, of course, yeah. specifically on creative stuff because he he talks about how um, there's one argument that he made, which was that he said that um, that there are just some people that are born creative and there's people that are who aren't, and I disagree with this entirely. Yeah, right? same here. Yeah, yeah, because he's he said there's only so few of them, and my thinking is like no, there's only so few because he's looking at the variables wrong. There's mm-hmm. only so few because we beat it out of people, right? Like we <laughs> tell people that they shouldn't do art because there's no money there, right? Yeah. Because like, when yeah. I go to my daughter's class, it's not like when I look at all the drawings, I'm like, oh, yeah, these clearly are all terrible artists, you know? Like none of them can do what my daughter can do. Like my daughter's marginally better than them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And she's only going to continuously get better than them for one simple reason. She's going to keep drawing, yeah. you know? I'm not going to yeah. tell her that that's not a job, you know? And where their her friends are probably like because all my my friends are all like engineers and doctors and stuff you know like that go to the, yeah. my daughter's school, yeah. and so you know they they'll probably have a different perspective on like what their kids can or should do you know, yeah. Um, yeah. like there's only three jobs I don't know if you knew like engineer doctor and uh, being a scholar of some sort that's the only jobs yeah. that exist right and that's so like it. well yeah yeah and that's what schools teach and so I, I think he's like empirically wrong on this i think he just doesn't understand you have to filter because some of the what he says is spot on some of the stuff he says is what you know like yeah. i'm kind of scratching my say who the hell are you to, to speak on behalf of creative people in that regard <laughs> but on other facts he's spot yeah. on right and you yeah gotta, i don't disagree with him on everything oh you su- you agree with him you're an asshole and i'm like no i, I just agree with that you know yeah. you got to pick him apart yeah 
Yeah, if I were to agree with everybody on everything that they said, then um, then I wouldn't agree with anybody, right? Yeah, like, exactly. if that was the criteria to like agree with somebody, like I I hear you, actually I do agree with him on some things. Some yeah. things he yeah, makes yeah. good points on, but that yeah. was one of them. I was just like, what the f are you talking about, bro? You know, like he's it's, yeah. he's one of those guys that just looks at data and says like, there must be a reason for this. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, dude, there's more variables to this. You know, you yeah. can't just look at raw numbers, right? Yeah. Um, there's so many ways you can distort raw numbers. Facts that... and logic, bro. <laughs> facts yeah, and logic. like the, 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 the argument of just like it's facts is not a strong argument in itself because facts mm-hmm. on, the, on their own aren't like law. It's just information. It's how we deci- like perceive that information. Like, for instance, well, yeah. if I were to give you fact that a hospital uh, had 100 people uh, hospital A and hospital B had a hundred people that go in, right? Mm-hmm. And hospital A, and this is a fact, uh, about only tw- like tw- like twenty percent of the people die at the hospital. Okay, this is hospital A, and in hospital B, five um, percent of the people die, right? Mm-hmm. So which hospital do you want to go to? Well, with only that information, and this will be let's say a fact, you would say, well, hospital B, of course, right? Yeah. But when you add the extra variable that hospital A admits all people who are in critical condition, right? Uh-huh. And a lot of them are like near death. And then hospital B only admits about like 10% of their the, their attendants people like mm-hmm. are in critical condition. So that means that if you're in critical condition in hospital B, there's half a chance that you're going to die, right? Yeah, Versus yeah. hospital A where you'll have a 20% chance. Yeah. So you then with that subtext, right? Yeah, so with that more information, you you can make a justified uh, basis of your, like the way you should manage that information, right? So like, I feel like he's right. Like I'm sure factually, <laughs> when you look at creatives in these industries, it's very small, right? Yeah. But yeah. why is it so small? Is it because mm-hmm. we're like, maybe we should consider that we're cutting art programs here in America, you know what I mean? Like no one takes art seriously in most of the world, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, maybe it's not a fact that there's only so select few. It's that those select few like may have had the circumstances like whether their parents were super supportive. Mm-hmm. Maybe they didn't give a damn what their teacher said, you know, and what everyone else told them that they couldn't do or could do. Right. Yeah. And so they, maybe it's more than they were just like these talented individuals. Maybe it was that they just kind of like got through all the bullshit that everybody yeah. else was like, wasn't able to go through. And I think that's yeah. a, that's a tragedy to be honest. I think more people Wrong. should be, Oh no. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you guys. How dare you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right, Adam's got a dip, dude. Yeah, okay, my yes. bad. All I, right, man. I'm, I'm go- yeah, that was fun. Well, Shit. we'll do it again, yeah, man. That was really nice. I yeah. love that, man. That was this is a it's just too bad it was so short by my opinion, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Maybe we should slot out like a 2-hour session and I think that'd be good. And then uh yeah. but in the future, uh we'll we'll figure it out. But yeah, you Thanks. dip. I'll take like the last remaining questions and I'll, I'm going to dip after. Yeah, we got awesome. it. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I really had a good time today, guys. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Yeah, Say true. bye to Adam, everybody. Bye. Uh, there, there's a delay, so if you don't see the byes, don't think that they don't care. <laughs> They're like, why, is, why isn't anyone saying bye to me? Yeah, no one's going to. All right, guys. Yeah, no one's okay, going to see. I'll write it out. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Love you all. Never change. Yeah. Change Wrong. with an M. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> That's going right, to be the new meme. Yeah. Peace out, dude. Right, see you later, right, man. This out. was a pleasure. Talk to you later. Take care. All right. Now now people are saying, <laughs> saying bye. All right. Let me see. Where were we? Oh, I don't know. The, let me it feels it. so quiet now. It is well, nice to have. I technically help. left. How the hell do I close <laughs> you? <laughs> Get out of here, the, dude. It's the hang up oh, icon. So Bottom so left. Remember that? Uh, With fuck, the X? I, I minim- excuse my French again. I, I minimized. That's all good. Where are you? Ah, so, there we go. Okay. There's a little and... phone with the X. All right. All right. See you later. See later. Me. <laughs> okay. Now he's out of here. That's funny. <laughs> That's I think funny. the last one was asking about the photo bashing. Yes. If and I'm then, correct. And then we, I think we answered that one. And then we All went right, into um, other stuff. Um, why can't I find it? <laughs> All right. Uh, chat. Is it already like it's all scrolled up? We well, might just end it then if you can't find it. And I'll blame you for the mishap of not answering the last final questions. I mean, I see other questions. Um, I just wanted to be in order. 
Yeah, were they the ones that were after the or before the no more questions? So I might might lightning. They might have this. been after actually. Oh yeah, here you. I might, have, I might have just missed it. Let me let me go through this because I can see my name faster. Uh, yeah, no, you're highlighted in. here. I'll just let me just ask what I see until you say no more questions. Hold on. So, okay. so I'm working on it, and then did, 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 what do you think about the? This is a new one. What do you think about the eighty twenty rule in painting? Should you practice other things in painting? Uh, what's the most common mistakes you see? There's a lot. Any predictions of the artistic pipeline? At least that's all the ones that oh. I saw. Um, oh, I found it. I found it. I mean, I found it. I'm good. You want to go from here? Yeah, hold on. Was there anyone before that? I guess not. Should you practice other things? I guess that person asked that question again twice. But we didn't Oh, the 80-20 it. is the next question. That is the next one. Okay. Yeah, it seems like yeah. there's like a few there, so we'll just lightning around it, and I'll just try to because yeah. I need to get going as well. But yeah. I, I I did say questions end, but then people ask, so it's not my fault that I talk a lot. I mean, it is actually my fault. <laughs> it's entirely my fault. <laughs> and, and then, go ahead. All right, uh, AJ. Well, oh, did you already read it? Yeah, I was like, actually, I already read it. Yeah, the 80-20 okay. tw uh, rule. Yeah, it's a good one uh, because it it kind of accounts for contrast. And you always want to think about contrast. So like having 50-50 uh, of everything doesn't give you the kind of right amount of contrast in most things. But uh, having 80-20 uh, for sure gives you a good amount of contrast. Cool. Next question. What do you think about using film frames to practice painting in Photoshop for beginners? Oh, yeah. Great. Great idea. Anything that make you paint is always a good idea. Okay. Should you practice other things in painting slash drawing, even though your area is somewhere different, like a concept artist for environments, practicing anatomy or faces? I think it might help. Yeah, absolutely. Like I have been learning how to do environments and more like hard surface perspective, like type drawings. And uh, it's been a tremendous help. I, I think anything that gets you working and drawing and painting is always a good idea. Um, but uh, learning different disciplines. Like I learned 3D uh, to make better concepts, but then learning 3D made me better at seeing 3D in my own drawings. So um, I encourage it just for that alone, just like to be able to um, see things in a more dimension. Yeah, absolutely. Solid. Okay. You're solid. Uh, what? When are you going to use your new programming knowledge to make a uh, new auto Oakley art wrote, program? <laughs> Oakley wrote that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know that's this seems like a joke, but um, I actually uh, had thought about how I can try to supplement my, like, <laughs> create like a program for me to get me halfway there. You know what I mean? Uh, it sounds far fetched, but it's it really isn't. If you start to dig, do any little bit of research about how machine learning works, it it really is understanding how the human brain works and it's it's doing a good job the problem that i think a lot of these machine learning like um algorithms don't realize yet and once they realize this which maybe some do i'm, I'm not in that field maybe some people are already on, to, on on top of this but it's, it's this idea of um being able to actually create like a machine learning algorithm that doesn't think like a brain because there's a much more effective more efficient way to learn that doesn't require a human like anatomy, you know what I mean? Like we're only thinking of it from what we know, but there might be a way to do it even better, right? Like there's these, um, where I got a hint of this is when they did these like machine learning algorithms that like learn how to walk or learn how to play video games. And the AI will always do something that was not intuitive, right? But then when they analyze that, like the actual effectiveness of the thing that it did is like obvious that it was better, you know? And so machine learning at first will definitely show us how to do this type of stuff, but um, like how to create and make things more fe efficiently and more effectively that weren't intuitive, right? But also once we learn how to make machine learning um, also not intuitive, we'll make machine learning even more epic. And it's one of those things that will basically take all our jobs, all of our jobs, including- It's like let it do what it does best. Yeah, or like design it. That's that's clearly the best way. Like, so the whole solution would be like build a machine learning algorithm that makes the best machine learning algorithm. <laughs> if that makes sense, like yeah. really meta. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what do you think about the eighty twenty? Oh, you already answered that. 
You stupid. Oh, you just reposted his stuff. What is the most common mistake you see when artists ask you to critique their portfolios? Um, a, a general portfolio no no is they put like studies in their portfolio. Just show your actual work, like your actual abilities. Don't show your, you know, whatever you think is um, like how good you can draw naked people. Uh, it's more like how good can you design? And if you can't design, then they don't really care about how good you can draw naked people. You know what I mean? Um, but the common mistake is usually material indication and, and poor anatomy. These are usually the biggest problems. Get better, like specifically with characters. Get better at your por uh, proportions and your forms and your anatomy. And then uh, Any... on top of that would be like design. Okay. Any predictions on what the artistic pipeline will be like when VR AR becomes more prevalent? Um, I think with the VR, it's already kind of there. Like it's just like a 3D tool to make 3D assets. Like you, you're actually in 3D space. It's beautiful. Um, but I think that the pipeline is going to just become more and more um, intimate. You're going to see smaller teams and more in intimate teams working on projects that look massive. That look like it could have taken like a lot, a lot of people. Um, but the AR VR like development, like making things for these things, is not. It's already being in use. People are already doing cool stuff. Okay. And did you want to go past questions end or no? Um, well, how many more are there? If there's like maybe one or two. One. Yeah, I'm see one, two. Let's just, uh, just take that last Three. one, one right after. And okay. then we'll call it a day. Sounds good. Wrong. Uh, <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> like, uh, um, let's see. Uh, Oh, I went too far. Okay, there it is. Why do artists keep flipping horizontal? What is the thing you are looking for when doing it? Oh, great. It? Yeah, this is a simple, simple question. Um, yeah, when I flip my canvas, it's so that I see my image um, fresh. It's a, a new perspective to the same image. Because when you look at something for so long, you create a bias towards what you think is good about it. But when you flip it, then you start to notice like the big problems with it uh, right away. And so flipping my canvas uh, allows me to do such a thing. It allows me to see my mistakes much sooner than later. But anyway, um, yeah, you should flip your canvas often. If you don't flip your canvas, you should do. Uh, you should keep your images zoomed out a lot. If you don't zoom out a lot, then you should keep. Um, um, you should keep like a navigation or a navigator on the side corner, or just like a thumbnail version of your design, so you can always see them from afar. But you should always, always um, be able to know like the the larger context of your your images. So, yeah, and yeah, for those of you who are curious to what brush I was using, like for the majority of these paintings, I, I made a brush that's essentially just my my logo. You see that? Um, yeah, I was like, you know, be cool. Like, I just start doing a lot of my paintings just using my name. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> alias and then whenever people ask i'm like oh yeah it's roll pencil is the brush yeah, what brush that be <laughs> roll pencil brush dude what, what brush that be <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like that's a great way to like just kind of like uh kind of make a joke was, of that what brush that be and at the same time be like like market myself it's the robot pencil uh, brush literally <laughs> it's the robot pencil it's fine. like early on you like uh scaled up the brush and i noticed it and i was like what the f Oh yeah, because I was like, like I think course. I was talking to my son, and I was trying to tell him to be quiet for a second. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, I, I think my brush was just there, statically large. That's funny. oh, it's funny. You can even uh, use it to stamp, <laughs> like right after. Mm -hmm. Like you can paint your thing and then uh, logo it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, all right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out, uh, and thanks to Adam for hanging out with us. I appreciate his his time. I will do it again. Maybe we'll switch it up. We'll go to his stream, hang out with him. And uh, either way, um, keep in touch. Talk to you guys later. If you guys enjoyed this, please let us know somehow, some way. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, it made me realize I should get more people to hang out with us and talk like large topics. Um, but either either way, 
Y'all are welcome to join us in any time we do these things. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. And if I don't see you, have a great weekend. Peace out, friends. Laters.